Hello, Bison football fans. Dave Cicchini coming at you with a big, big win this past Saturday at Georgetown. Overtime victory. Uh, we want to get down to uh, all the great stories from the game. Uh, I've got two repeat guests with us. Uh, on my right, Coleman Bennett, junior running back from Florida. On my left, senior defensive back Gavin Pringle from Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, the game was uh, great weather, 70 degrees, sunny, uh, and it was our first time down in Georgetown. I think the last time Bucknell had gone down and played uh, at Georgetown, it was probably five or six years ago. So it's been a while since the Bison had been there. Uh, close game in the first half, uh, seven to three. We were down at halftime. Freshman kicker Matt Shear made a 50-yard field goal in the first half, the longest field goal since 1981 here at Bucknell, I'm told. Uh, so close game. Uh, second half, uh, Georgetown opened up a lead to 14-3, and that's where Coleman Bennett comes in. So Coleman, it's 14-3. Georgetown kicks off to you. You take it from there. Uh, yeah, so kick it off, and uh, we had a good team caught up. Special teams coach, Coach Butler, had a good scheme and kicked it off the tee and I made my reads. I trusted all the 10 other guys on the special teams, on the kick up return unit, and just followed my block and took it all the way to the house. All right. So about 93 yards for the touchdown, that's right? Yes, sir. Okay. At what point did you know, hey, I'm not getting caught? Because you got close, yeah. but, but you made it. I knew they had some fast guys on the kickoff unit. Um, when I cut back, as soon as I cut back, I kept my head forward, just looked at the end zone. I was just saying to myself, I'm not getting caught. So, I mean, really, as soon as I cut back, I just wouldn't allow myself to get caught. Right, right. So, you get into the end zone. It's a touchdown. But you'd experienced this earlier in the season against Lafayette, right? Opening right. play against Lafayette. Uh, you take one, I think it was 97 yards to the house uh, at home to open things up, only to turn around and realize that a hold uh, nullified the touchdown. Were you worried? Did you look back for the flag or did you just? Uh, honestly, I wasn't worried at all. I mean, right. I kind of just, I was just living in the moment, really. I was just excited to be able to score for the team. And I don't know, I just had a feeling that it wasn't a flag. So good thing there wasn't. I didn't look back or anything. Everybody was celebrating. And I seen the sideline, everybody going crazy. So I was just hoping it wasn't a flag, but I wasn't really worried at all. So. Yeah, well, it was an outstanding play and, and certainly got us right back into the game. As we progress towards the fourth quarter, we found ourselves uh, down 11 points and uh, was able to cut that lead uh, with another Matt Shear field goal. And uh, so we found ourselves down eight, needed to get a big stop defensively, which we were able to do. And we found ourselves uh, out of timeouts, uh, needing to drive 83 yards uh, for pay dirt and then hit a, a two point conversion to tie things up. Uh, we have an amazing drive, um, go the length of the field, uh, mostly in no huddle mode. Uh, we're on about the 10 yard line, uh, and that's where you get the handoff uh, and bring it in from 10 yards. Take us through that play uh, to score. Uh, yeah, so like you said, we're in no huddle mode, so we had just ran a play. Try and get back on the line of scrimmage. And I, I kind of knew it from my pre snap read. I was like, yeah, this one's going to go. So as soon as I got the handoff, uh, good blocks from the line and the tight end. Safety came over late. I reached over uh, for the touchdown, reached over the goal line. And the ref marked me down at the one at first, but I was confident. Sort of like the kickoff return, I was confident that I was in. So they ended up reviewing it. Uh, everybody, I feel like everybody was kind of nervous, but I kind of knew I was in from the jump. So I was just waiting for the ref to come over there and say, they overturned it and ended up overturning it, and it was a touchdown. So I was just happy to be able to touch the end zone again for the second time that day. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, in, in an odd set of circumstances, even though we were out of timeouts, Georgetown had to call the timeout because we were lining up. Uh, they spotted it at the half yard line. This was where the clock was running. There was under 40 seconds to go in the game. Uh, Georgetown was trying to run their goal line personnel onto the field uh, and realized they weren't going to be able to do it in time before we snapped uh, the ball again. So they called timeout, which gave the replay a chance to look at the play. And, and ultimately, uh, they awarded us the touchdown. Needing a two-point conversion, we were able to complete uh, a pass to freshman receiver Josh Gary, who ran a great route, gotten to, uh, just past the front pylon. 
uh, to tie the score. Uh, then we came up with a big stop. Uh, our kickoff return unit was able to pin them deep, uh, and they only were able to bring the kickoff back to the four-yard line. So they took uh, a knee and, and uh, headed to overtime. Uh, about that time, I'll, I'll bring Gavin, you in here. I, I guess, first of all, you're from Baltimore. First mm -hmm. time playing, I guess, anywhere remotely close uh, to being home since mm -hmm. way back uh, uh, Towson, uh, your freshman year. Uh, so did you have a lot of friends and family that, that uh, made the, the trek uh, on over to D.C.? Uh, I had a few family members, a couple of old teammates that used to play for Bucknell. So, and a couple of people that uh, were around, like when I played in high school, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So it was nice having everybody there and nice being close to home, but it was also a nice first time playing at Georgetown in my four years. So. Yeah, yep. and they've That's got a fun. brand new uh, stadium there yeah. uh, as well. Uh, and it was our first time there. Obviously there was also a lot of uh, football alums that, that attended the game yeah. as well, which was, which was cool to see. It was great to see a lot of those guys, particularly hanging out after the game as well. Uh, now, you're going up against a Georgetown team that has one of the top passing attacks uh, in the league. Obviously, we went up against Fordham, and they have the number one uh, passing attack in the nation. But uh, this Georgetown passing attack was pretty good as well, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. But uh, both, uh, Coach Bowers talked all week about keeping everything in front of us. He said nothing cheap, nothing deep. So mainly just keeping everything in front of us, and I knew we'd be fine if we did that. Yeah, so. uh, that, now they came out and took that opening kick 75 yards and set – the, the tone, it looked like it was good. It could be a long day. Uh, how did you guys change? Did you make any adjustments? Uh, to Because for really, for most of the rest of the game, they only had one good drive following their opening drive. Yeah, uh, it's more about what we play, not about what they do. So we just played our game, locked in. We started off kind of slow. We just had to lock in and just focus up. And I think when we did that, the game kind of flipped our way. All right, right. So we go into overtime now. Uh, we lose the coin toss, so our offense goes out first and uh, kicks a field goal. So we're, we're up three, uh, and Georgetown has a penalty on their first play, which kind of put them uh, just slightly out of field goal range. A field goal would send it to second overtime, a touchdown. They win the game. If we hold them to no points, we win the football game. We get them to third down uh, and long, and uh, it looked to me like they were kind of going to try a, a pass play that they had – run a couple of times successfully uh, to their number one receiver, uh, Tomas, who's, who's one of the leaders in the Patriot League. Uh, take us through that final play there on third and long. Yeah, so the whole game, they was basically just running us off just to get him open. So they were just running different routes, just trying to open him up. And we were in man coverage. And he was, they went trips. So that's like three receivers to one side. So they ran the outside receiver deep. And that was my man. I was on top of the route. And then they ran their other uh, Tomas on the out route. And I was on top of the route, so that gave me the ability to just look back and see the quarterback throw the ball. And once I seen him throw it, I just went and attacked the ball and caught the interception. Yeah, yeah, outstanding. Now, huge moment in the game. Obviously, you go down, uh, take a knee, we win the, the football game. Is that, you know, the, the equivalent of like a walk-off home run, right? Mm -hmm. is, is that the first time in, in, in your uh, football career that you've been able to end a football game like that? Uh, I actually called a game against Georgetown our freshman year when – uh, forced to fumble at the end of the game. You remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, uh, second time. Yep. Against the yeah, same yeah team, exactly. So, no, yeah. no, you're exactly right. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's a, a, a situation yeah. that certainly you were, you were used to. And as, as, our, as a football team, we were used to. I mean, we've been through some really close contests so far this season. Obviously, we had uh, the big win uh, against Lehigh three weeks prior. Uh, so that's one thing I really uh, attribute to our team, you know, led by some, some veteran leadership, uh, including the guys that are next to me here. Uh, just to be able to fight through that adversity, I think it really made a difference, uh, you know, to get into that deep into that fourth quarter and have nobody panic and have us do so many great things on offense, defense, and special team uh, to win that game, you know, in the final seconds of regulation and then again in, in overtime. So a huge win, uh, which brings us to our last game of the season. So we uh, are back at home uh, against Marist, uh, a pioneer team. Uh, they're, they're coming into town. Uh, they're four and six, right? now. Uh, it should be a great game slated for a 1 p.m. kickoff Saturday in Christy Matthewson Memorial Stadium. We could really use your support because most of our students will be gone on Thanksgiving break. So the more Bison fans we can get there, uh, the better. We really could use your help. As usual, thank you for all of your support, and we look forward to seeing as many of you as possible this Saturday. Go Bison!